A reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 15, beginning at verse 21. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and feed it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. Hear what the Spirit is saying to us now. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Well, there's a saying that I remember from my school days, and it's not really a positive one. But it was, pick on someone your own size. On the one hand, that seems so reasonable because, well, for most of us, when there's an imbalance, it just isn't fair. Justice demands equality. The hard part is that having to point this out to someone means that they've probably missed something, perhaps an awareness of what is fair or of what is reasonable. So if we were to see someone older picking on someone younger, or someone bigger on someone smaller, or someone who is bright picking on someone with challenges, or someone in a position of power lording it over someone without, we know it's just not right. We see this all over our world and in just about every society, and it's what I would refer to as an innate sense of justice that we are hardwired with, although we've seen way too many examples of those who get their wires crossed. Anytime we hear of protests, we know that there are people on polar sides of the issues, and it's all too easy to get caught up in the discussion, and that's only if there actually is a discussion to get caught up in. Here's another saying. Once their mind is made up, there's no hope of changing them, regardless of the facts. Keeping our sanity or keeping an open mind can be difficult to do at times. The rest of the world might be caught up in controversy, and we might even say it's gone a little crazy. Kind of sounds like our world right now. Isolate? Don't isolate. Mask? No mask. Gloves? No gloves. Follow the arrows on the floor, or not? Last week I was at Costco, and a woman hesitated to come down the aisle that I was just about to leave, because she was trying to determine which way people should be going and following the arrows. Well, I assured her that, well, actually she was okay, because there weren't any arrows anymore, and she looked so relieved. But I've seen the glances of some people that they have received should they accidentally go the wrong way. And even I've been guilty of that one. Because what I want is really just a few feet in, like the ketchup is right there. And do I really have to go all the way around? Yeah. But judgment comes easily, and often quickly. Compassion takes time and understanding. And openness to seeing the big picture plus the ability to get the facts, all the facts, as much as possible. So at first glance, this difficult reading is just that. It's a hard one. This is Jesus. He's the one who can feed thousands with just a little. The one who actually reaches out and touches the untouchables, and then has the audacity to heal them. The one who speaks to a Samaritan woman, Culturally, a huge no-no. The one who speaks against injustice, like when he was challenged for healing on the Sabbath. So what is with this one? 
This is not the first time Jesus has been approached by someone outside of his circle, outside of his faith community, or someone considered socially unacceptable. She approaches him with respect, calling him by an honorific title, Lord, Son of David, acknowledging both his rich heritage, his ancestry, as well as the position of power that he holds. Yet his response seems offensive, almost cruel. In fact, we could say he should pick on someone his own size. So let's put this scenario in perspective. This woman is, well, she's a woman. That automatically puts her below Jesus in their world, where a woman had no status whatsoever. She was also a pagan, a Canaanite. When Jesus sent out the twelve on their mission, he instructed them to focus on the lost sheep of the house of Israel and to stay clear of any Gentiles or Samaritans. Well, perhaps he's just staying true to his instructions to them. Plus, factor in, this woman is a part of a tribe that the Jews conquered when they took over the Promised Land. So really, he doesn't need to pay any attention to her. She would be almost a non-entity to him. Jesus seems to be simply following the cultural prejudices of his day by paying no attention to her. And she actually has no right to make this or any request of Jesus, let alone to think that, well, he might do something about it. Another factor here is that in Jesus' society, to ask for mercy for someone, well, it implied that they owed you something. Mercy was a sense of obligation toward a debt owed to God or to another person. And if that person then does indeed show mercy, it was an acknowledgement of that debt and taking responsibility to pay off that debt. Jesus didn't owe her anything. How dare she ask for anything from him, especially mercy. A third factor in this story is the way she approached Jesus. She didn't go to him in humility and in quietness. Think of Nicodemus, a ruler of their day, another Jew, who went on his own and in the evening when he knew Jesus would be alone. In this case, the woman actually used the presence of the crowd to her advantage and issued a challenge to Jesus in a very public forum. Life was very public, and would Jesus' response bring him honor or shame? He would be judged by his response to her, to either ignore her or to deal with her. In some ways, it was a no-win. But Jesus chooses to deal with her, and is actually very insulting to her. Calling someone a dog in any society at any time is equating that person with the lowest of the low. He challenges her with this, and those who were listening would have expected her to slink away in embarrassment. What was she thinking? And yet she rises to the challenge that Jesus presented and responds with a challenge right back at him. Oh boy, this is going to get interesting. Well, we know that Jesus' initial non-reaction to her was the norm. And here's where things start to turn around. In a time and in a place where Jesus could simply have walked away, he breaks the social norms. He says to the disciples, but I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. But he responds to this woman, this pagan, this Canaanite, by treating her as a human being. He gives her the respect in this challenge as treating her as an equal. What this would do would be to set all the cultural norms and all the cultural prejudices front and center. No more sliding them under the carpet. They would be obvious to anyone who were witnesses to this byplay. Just as Jesus would call those in authority to account through his parables, here he calls each and every listener to account. He put their norms right in front of their faces and challenged them to consider them. This pagan woman with no standing 
proved her loyalty to Jesus despite his aloofness and in spite of his seeming rudeness. Well, she had probably decided to put herself out there well before this encounter with all the reasonable things that could have held her back. Loyalty in Jesus' day was a total commitment to a person or to a cause, no matter what, through thick and thin. And as in this example of loyalty and commitment in the Middle East, it often paid off. What a wake-up call for those disciples and for the crowd that witnessed this encounter. What a wake-up call for us. In a society that we live in where opinion can flip-flop with the latest polls, where the bottom line can be more important than those who help with the bottom line, loyalty can be deemed fickle. So in this reading, in this instance, we too are being asked to consider our norms and our ways of doing and being. To consider those around us we may not have even realized were around us. Perhaps we're being called to consider those who have been more isolated than we have been. Those of us who have access to social media have been so privileged. How many in our world have actually experienced total isolation? This Canaanite woman just demonstrated an amazing loyalty to Jesus, which resulted in the healing of her daughter. How can our loyalty be shown today? What commitment can we express? How can we express it? What are the ways available to us right now in isolation to share our faith? How can we still help turn some of our norms upside down? Well, it's going to be different for each and every one of us, and it's going to be different for each and every congregation, for each and every country, and each and every Christian around the world. But our loyalty will be seen, our faith will be evident, by what we think, by how we respond, by what we do. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on us. And he will. Amen.